Right, so once again, welcome everyone to uh, Intel Software's um, Experts Talk session today. My name is Christoph Horvath, and I will have a, an ad admittedly minimal role in moderating today's session, which will actually be hosted by our partner expert, Kalman Kerestashi. And Kalman is, uh, is the CEO uh, of Contrasys Control Engineering Limited, just so you get a little background of who he is. Uh, Contrasys is a company delivering process control and automation systems for its clients. And uh, as an expert of control engineering, Kalman has over 25 years of experience in delivering process control and SCADA projects. Uh, Contrasys is mainly active in the chemical and the pharmaceutical industries. So that's where Kalman has most of uh, his experience. All right, and just a few words on housekeeping. So, um, the uh, this session is being recorded, and you will be able to find the uh, the video on demand on Intel's website. So feel free to share it with your team. And one last thing that I would like to do before I hand it over to Kalman is to ask you a simple question, uh, just to gauge your current knowledge around this field. So how long do you think, on average, it takes uh, to implement the system for? Compliance with uh, with the standard with Part 11. Just off the top of your head, we're interested in what you think. Okay, thank you. So just so you know, uh, about 30% of you think that it takes about two to four weeks. Another 30-ish percent uh, was for over a month, and another 30-something percent just doesn't know. Right, interesting. Okay, and with that, uh, let's actually begin today's session. I'm going to make Kalman the presenter, hand it over to him. Come on, are you ready? Uh, hello, everyone. This is Kaman Kerestashi. Can you hear me? Yes. It's really OK. Good. So uh, the purpose uh, of today's presentation and webinar is to give you uh, a short roadmap how the validation, the tool validation uh, of an ALM sort of package like would be more can be done uh, against the requirements uh, in the regulated industries like pharmaceutical or medical devices. Um, it is based on uh, our experience, uh, what we actually did, and uh, uh, based on also some experience with customers uh, or potential users. Uh, in 2017, September, England made a a users conference in Stuttgart, uh, especially for uh, medical device developers and, and pharmaceutical users. And uh, made a presentation there about uh, the GAMP template we have developed for CodeBeamer. And uh, the, the feedback was uh, rather surprising. Uh, most of the potential clients uh, were fine about uh, the, the GAMP template itself to use, but the, uh, a lot of questions arise after the presentation that how do they comply with the uh, basic rules, with the basic regulations. So they were absolutely not certain how to initially uh, take uh, CodeBeamer or another electronic ALM software in use because uh, the primary validation has, uh, they thought, has high risk and they cannot imagine inspectors to accept electronic signatures and so on. So there was a, uh, I, I could see a hesitation among the customers. So uh, when we actually started to use Code Beamer for this purpose, uh, we also went through the procedure. So now I would like to share you our experiences and also what we uh, finally created uh, to make it easier for other users, like uh, potential users in those industries. So the program for today will be uh, how to use uh, CodeBeamer ALM in the FDA regulated areas. Uh, we try to summarize the compliance requirements we have to map 
And also, I would like to give, uh, based on the previous words, a practical approach uh, for the tool validation. And uh, we set up a very basic strategy for this uh, validation. And of course, I give you some words about the reference project we have completed. So the target areas are primarily the medical devices, development, uh, hardware and software, complete uh, tools and complete equipment. Uh, also pharmaceutical uh, automation projects or IT projects where the good automation manufacturing practices uh, has to be used or GMP rules have to be followed. And also the related embedded and IoT device development for all these areas, Intland has uh, ready-made templates available, which can be right away uh, started to use by the customers. So let's see uh, the levels of the compliance we have to achieve. First of all, there is a tool level. You certainly know if you uh, install any software on a computerized system in your uh, regulated environment, uh, you have to comply with the industry standards and regulations. Uh, this makes sure this makes sure that uh, your products and your services will be also compliant. At least this uh, is a basic uh, requirement for that. Uh, on, on the top of the uh, software installation, you always run some applications. You create projects. So on the project level here, like the PharmaGun template or the medical device template of England also have to be compliant. So this, uh, this level also have to be uh, qualified to be able to use. And uh, last but not least, your organization, all the procedures and operations your people follow should also comply and should meet the regulatory requirements. So actually you have to operate a proper uh, quality management system to achieve these goals. Today in the webinar, we will uh, focus on the two-level validation. So how to satisfy this, uh, the regulations? First of all, we have to identify what regulations are in effect uh, to satisfy. And we have to make, we have to make sure that uh, our environment, what we set up is compliant and it will support uh, first of all, our organization or our team uh, to be able to provide the, the services or, uh, or the products to our customers. Uh, so we have to validate this environment to meet the regulations. And uh, to be able to do that, we have to follow a uh, strategy. And I would like to show you this uh, strategy for CodeBeamer uh, as an application lifecycle management tool. Uh, the holistic approach of Code Beamer helps us to uh, make this validation because uh, it helps to avoid the integration and the compliance issues uh, otherwise have to be made. So we don't have to deal with other softwares and interfaces. We just have to focus on Code Beamer, which covers all fields of the application lifecycle management. So uh, what are the requirements on our areas? Uh, we can classify them as national and international requirements, uh, regulations, sorry. And uh, we also uh, have to focus on how this is checked or monitored. So first of all, you internally have to do this regularly uh, by usually it's done by the QA department or uh, QA organization within the larger organization. And of course, uh, foreign inspectorates uh, can drive inspections like the FDA. And this can be uh, routine inspections or also unannounced inspections. Uh, if one is working for a pharma company, knows that uh, how uh, difficult days could be those days. OK, so the compliance requirements on our areas are mainly covered by the good manufacturing practices. Uh, especially the Annex 11 stands for the uh, computerized systems used in farm and food in the, uh, areas. Uh, GMPs, these GMPs are forced, enforced in the United States by the Food and Drug Administration. And uh, they include these rules in the generic Code of Federal Regulations. 
and practically uh, those regulations enforces all of the companies who are delivering for the world market or to the US and the current all, all, always the current version of those manufacturing practices are called as the CGMPs. Of course, uh, other organizations like the WHO or the European Union has their own regulations. But uh, of course, these are not uh, different, just somehow adopt national or regional uh, uh, specialties into the good manufacturing practices. Uh, one famous of those is the UK Medicines Act, which uh, is the orange guide. So UK is somehow different, like in other cases as well. Also for automation systems, uh, there are some guidelines collected by the International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineers, and these can be followed for the uh, uh, automation system manufacturers and all the system integrators who put into operation those systems. So we see that there are a couple of uh, guidelines and regulations in effect. So the most important and acknowledged worldwide as a main uh, guideline or main regulation line is the Code of Federal Regulations. It's uh, interesting uh, that the uh, it is generic and it's part of a, a, a very large uh, a federal register, which is uh, part of the uh, United States uh, Code of Federal Regulations. It has 50 titles, just to mention that it is, it's absolutely not about our area, but about very generic areas like uh, Title Three is about the president, Title 11 about federal elections. And in our focus is right now the title uh, 21, which is about food and drugs, has multiple chapters, multiple sections, and <clears throat> part 11 is in our focus right now, the electronic records and electronic signature. Uh, it's interesting again, part 800 is about uh, medical device development, which, further, which contains further regulations, how to do those activities. So uh, this regulation, uh, Code of Federal Regulations part uh, contains uh, multiple subparts and sections. We took this regulation and uh, altogether could identify uh, 36 items within the regulation. And uh, we implemented the uh, items we have found interesting uh, for code beamer tool validation in a validation template. Uh, I can show you it's just the document is available. It can be downloaded from the government side of the United States and you find all the uh, items and here are marked the items we take into account with a red circle. So some parts for electronic records and very easy to read them out because they are very short contents and part for electronic signatures. So this is the basic uh, for our validation. Uh, this has this is one part of the validation we made. So how practically you do this um, when you uh, implement uh, Code Beamer ELM on your system? How to validate that? So I would like to give you some practical steps what to do and to show you whether if if it's not uh, very difficult. You can follow step by step, uh, let's say a recipe, and you get the result uh, with not too many, not too much effort. So first of all, you install Code Beamer. Code Beamer can run on different platforms, different operating systems like Windows and Linux, and also a Docker uh, a representation is available. <clears throat> Alternatively, you can subscribe for a cloud-based uh, solution at Intland. So when you have your code beamer installed, you simply import a template which we created for this validation activity. This contains all the uh, items I listed uh, before, and it contains all the uh, necessary tools also. So uh, customization of this template is not really necessary, but of course, if uh, you are sitting in a larger 
organization in uh, several departments and with uh, uh, several parties to influence this uh, validation that then you can uh, customize the roles or permissions. You can add some more uh, roles to the uh, system or you can also modify the workflows if your uh, procedures to, to approve or review uh, items like this uh, is more complex. But indeed, we don't think that you have to do this. Uh, we try to keep it simple. And of course, uh, you can extend the provided validation requirements uh, with your uh, company special items, regula regulatory items. Uh, this is a, to extend the content, not the structure, but the content of the, uh, of the template. It's possible. Uh, you have the built-in tool like the traceability browser within uh, CodeBeamer to always check the completeness of your, docu of your validation documentation. This traceability browser automatically will list the relation and correlation between uh, the user requirement specification items, the functional design specification item, and the test cases. Actually, when uh, you think you are done with that, uh, you simply can uh, specialize some uh, template documents in, in also supported within the template. That means you can add your company logo and you can add the validation team member names or title states uh, to those uh, uh, word templates uh, to be able to export the requirement sections and also the uh, finalized test cases. Uh, this way you will have uh, word documents <coughs> and you can review those uh, documents in an electronic format then print it on, on paper and have it approved and signed by the relevant uh, qualification uh, staff. So that's uh, simply how to create uh, documents via which you can go through the features and uh, capabilities of CodeBeamer against the regulatory requirements and uh, execute the tests. So you, you, actually the, the tests lists all of these uh, uh, requirements and the step-by-step -step instructions how to do uh, the tests within CodeBeamer. That means uh, you document your tests on paper, but you actually do a functional and uh, partially an installation qualification uh, within CodeBeamer. <clears throat> uh, you can, uh, of course, this way document and, and sign your tests uh, on the paper protocols. Uh, finally, you can approve your tests and then create a validation report, which will uh, prove the compliance of uh, the CodeBeamer ALM tool uh, with the mentioned regulation. The, the approach I mentioned is uh, a very safe and very easy one. And it's called as a narrow interpretation of the scope of the uh, Title 21 CFR Part 11. Uh, you use CodeBeamer itself uh, for the validation of your requirements, the functional and design specification, the test protocols, and actually you can uh, execute some tests within CodeBeamer during the uh, test procedure. Uh, all this helps you to understand, first of all, the uh, basic CodeBeamer features, uh, how the tools are used in the, in the validation scope, and you also, it, it also educates you how to collaborate, because uh, the different uh, team members has to review and uh, have to approve some uh, items, so you follow practically some workflows. But uh, again, all this is done with uh, simply no risks as the process follows the narrow interpretation of part 11 scope. That means the electronically generated information is approved and signed uh, on paper. So you follow actually the traditional validation method and based on FDA uh, announcement uh, for customer 
calls it's this computer system then does not trigger part 11 so at the time you make the validation the data uh, uh, included within code beamer or the validation data included within code beamer is not uh, part of uh, the part 11 scope <clears throat> so this uh, is a very basic strategy uh, first to to make a product level validation and uh, make sure that uh, your your uh, tool which is used further to run more complex uh, uh, and environment for for product development or for uh, uh, application lifecycle services uh, will comply with the uh, regulations re uh, related to electronic records and electronic signatures so <clears throat> this is a, a key feature of the ALM software so actually you uh, just validate the software itself and this provides the basics for the more complex and specific applications what you put on top of the uh, software installation of code beamer okay the, the bad news is that uh, like uh, all computer uh, computerized systems this has to be revised regularly especially when uh, you uh, upgrade code beamer to a newer version uh, the, the uh, good news is that uh, based on the latest uh, regulations in effect for years now you have to make a risk assessment and you don't have to revalidate everything so practically you uh, make an assessment on your system and you validate only the change parts if they have any effect on the basic requirements that means the how code beamer stores the electronic records and how the electronic signatures are uh, handled by the system so uh, some words about our reference project uh, in 2016 uh, ABB Hungary bought uh, and installed a code beamer system uh, to manage the life cycle of uh, pharmaceutical projects uh, completed in different areas and this we, we use uh, we are in close contact with ABB and we also take part in those projects and these are mostly uh, industrial process control systems installed for process automation projects. The uh, control systems uh, are highly scalable process automation parts uh, running in uh, virtual platforms. And we use uh, redundancy on all levels like power supplies, processing units, storage and networking. So highly safe systems. And we use the most uh, modern uh, uh, standards for uh, running batch uh, applications also so uh, also the physical and procedural model based applications are part of those uh, installations and actually we use uh, code beamer right now to manage all the validation uh, life cycle aspects of, of those systems so uh, to be able to do that uh, a year ago we have been uh, we, uh, there has been executed a validation for uh, code beamer tool itself to be able to use uh, in in that area uh, it was done by ABB and by our company and it was also supervised by uh, one of the largest customers uh, of ours here in Hungary it's the chemical works of Gideon Richter PLC it's a rather old company but spending a lot on uh, uh, research and development uh, actually uh, based on that effort uh, some 10 years ago they have started uh, to build a biotech plan and the biotech plan is uh, producing uh, making fermentations uh, using mammalian cells and right now there is a capacity extension running in that plant in the Debrecen facility and we take part in that project and the full uh, collaboration and the uh, application and system development is done based on code beamer so we use the gun template for that and that is the 
uh, largest uh, implementation right now of that. And also uh, it, it uh, is a very good area to give us uh, an experience how to use uh, an ALM software, an electronic ALM software for that purposes. Uh, both uh, the ABB QA and also the QA of the GDN Richter, the pharmaceutical facility, uh, approved the uh, core beam reinstallation. So based on that, uh, we are doing all the actual work based on that. Uh, these are including the requirement management, like uh, the uh, functional specification, project and validation planning, system configuration, uh, application design specification, some documents uh, like uh, quality plan and user requirement specification was done on the traditional way uh, created by the customer, but we also imported them into the system to be uh, a basis for uh, all further work. And as you can see, the risk management, user stories, bug handling, change controls, uh, all the project schedules and tasks, either timekeeping, and a very important part, the test uh, protocol development, and also the test runs and acceptance are done within uh, the holistic mainframe of, of uh, holistic frame of uh, Cold Beamer and also the collaboration of each uh, teams who review, comment, approve the uh, different items is done by electronic signatures. The uh, biggest achievement uh, on, on those activities that uh, so far uh, no single paper document had been created or signed in the automation project frame. So that's what we think is very important. It, it's running almost now for one year. And indeed, there was uh, no reason to, uh, to turn back and to, and to uh, give up our way to make the things uh, more effective and to run everything in an electronic uh, ALM environment. So this is our, uh, uh, the end of my presentation. I ask you if you have any questions, first of all, and then I, if you have time still, I'd like to give you a short introduction with a demo on an actual project. Let me just add that we're going to have a, a question and answer session at the end of uh, at, at the end of the webinar. So if you do have any questions, in the meantime, uh, you can type them in the questions box. Uh, let me just make sure to check there. Okay. And I try to go to try to go to Code Beamer, and in our Code Beamer installation, uh, we have. Uh, Multiple projects. One of them is uh, about code beamer validation. <clears throat> so, uh, when you uh, install the the template on your on your code beamer, uh, you will find the same uh, information. So, you will uh, find information about the use of uh, the template. So, there are uh, validation strategy detailed and the procedure itself. Uh, you have different audit trails within the system and it helps you to learn how do they work. The most important part of each code beamer installation are the trackers where you find the relevant information. So the, you, uh, once you do the qualification, you should have a qualification plan. It's uh, pre-prepared uh, in certain points. If you want to have uh, multiple items, of course, you can include them, but the basic uh, qualification steps uh, we intend to do uh, in this area are included here. And it also defines uh, the software category, uh, what you uh, implement via Code Beamer and how to do that. It defines the qualification team, which is included right now in the project. And it also gives you uh, 
uh, roadmap, a short roadmap and documentation and deliverables uh, once you create the document. Of course, within the uh, current uh, implementation, your company name is not included, but in, in most of the cases, you can replace the axis or the company references by your actual uh, company name. Uh, of course, there is a user requirement specification, which has two main parts. One part is your company specific part, as I mentioned, which can be extended. So the scope of the validation and your requirements, how your company is prepared for that, uh, what uh, you intend to do, uh, what computer system you would like to use for running code beamer. So this is uh, a small IQ like uh, qualification requirement and all this is uh, included and also how the system uh, should behave, what generic requirements you have against uh, uh, the ALM system. If you have uh, your internal uh, company-based qualification rules or regulations, you can include them here. Uh, we have also a, a documents uh, section within CodeBeamer where you can store pre-prepared documents. So here there is a place for your company qualification documents you can upload here. And additionally, we also have here the templates for uh, the Microsoft uh, Word exports. So if you want to export your uh, quality plan or functional design specification or user requirement specification, there are two sets of templates available. And these are the templates where uh, you simply have to put your company logo. You can direct edit these uh, templates uh, in Microsoft Word and you can extend, uh, you can add your uh, qualification team members and dates and all this stuff, which is uh, normally needed for a paper-based uh, documentation. Word just opens the template and here you see these are pre-prepared. Of course, you can select different formatting if you like, but the uh, document numbering and all this heading and footers are pre-prepared. And actually it has all the information which will, uh, all the uh, code which will extract the information from your uh, code beamer. You don't have to touch the program part. You have to also only include your company logo and organization name and so on. All these templates are pre-prepared like that, so you can use it directly uh, in a very short time to uh, make your exports. The exports are easy to do. You simply select the tracker and select export to office and then your user requirement specification is quickly becomes a document, um, a Word document. You select the uh, actual template you fixed and you press export. This way, uh, the information you have here on the left side becomes part of a, a Word document. You simply save it and that's it. And you can use uh, that to revise, to revise, to review by others, to comment, of course, and uh, and to print it out later on and sign approve. Uh, of course, here we have the uh, uh, mentioned uh, elements, 36 elements of uh, title uh, 21 CFR part 11. Here they are listed and also, uh, for instance, enforced permitted workflows. It also has a reference to the part 11 document, so it can be easily identified later on also by the inspectors. The, also the requirements are classified. What kind of requirement, what does it uh, mean, in which category uh, it's relevant. So uh, all this is available and uh, what I also would like to show you when you want to uh, check the completeness of your documentation, you can use the uh, user requirement specification in a traceability browser as an initial tracker you can add your functional design specification, practically how CodeBeamer implements those functions. It's pre-prepared also. And you can also include the pre-prepared or extended test cases, test protocols uh, made for you or extended by you. And the system lists, lists for you 
uh, how the user requirements are satisfied by design documents and what kind of test cases are implemented for that. So it's a very good overview. For some uh, items, we don't have uh, a test case because in most cases, uh, there are not necessary, of course, in, if you use biometric signatures, uh, there is a, a design specification for that. And if you uh, identify yourself based on that, you write a test protocol how to do that. The test protocols are uh, mostly very simple step-by-step uh, -step, uh, protocols or recipes how to test certain items. For instance, we mentioned this test and force uh, workflows and the system offers uh, four test steps for the how to check it. It gives you advices, go to this tracker in the actual uh, code team environment, check whether this workflow exists and step by step uh, check through that all the uh, relevant transitions are uh, available and only those can be used to go through the uh, workflow. So this way, uh, you will find uh, each part I mentioned uh, available within the template. So the test protocols, you see we have a couple of test protocols and also the design documents and traceability is also available, available for that. The rest of the template solves as a placeholder to uh, check uh, in one test, for instance, whether the change requests are available. So during the test, you will create one or more items here as part of the test uh, procedure. So this is it. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you. And uh, just as an experience, uh, this uh, also the uh, help pages contain a certain roadmap. Uh, after the uh, presentation, uh, you will be able to check it here or, and also you will be asked, or we might ask you well, now, what do you think? Uh, how much time you need uh, for uh, completing uh, an initial tool validation of CodeBeamer based on uh, Title 21 CFR Part 11. Thank you for listening to me. And so we're wondering if this uh, changes your views on just how long it takes uh, to implement compliance in the standard. Yeah, this it, yeah. Uh, in, in, in our opinion, to just to complete here, to understand the requirements and the, the, the structure of the CodeBeamer template and to implement the tests that can be uh, done uh, in a couple of days. So let's say within one week. Of course, if you have a larger organization and the approval procedure is uh, longer in time, I mean, you send uh, a request to certain people and they react in three days, then it can take uh, up to even a month. But again, uh, this is even uh, a, a, a time frame which is uh, very short compared to uh, the risk that uh, I don't know a product, I don't know how to implement validation of that, I don't know uh, what regulations apply uh, for, for that uh, kind of product to be able to use it safely and uh, to comply the regulations. So believe, we believe that uh, using a template like this makes your life uh, much easier and reduces the risk dramatically to have problems later on with the use of the product if you have an inspection. All right, so let's get over to your questions. We have uh, a user asking, does CodeBeamer work with a commercial database? Yes, uh, CodeBeamer LM supports Oracle and MySQL. So you can go to your, to this. Um, and there's another question, this one's for you, Kalman. Uh, how does this template tie in with our, our company's quality standards and our uh, quality management system? Well, the, the uh your quality management system uh, first of all partially covered by the template itself 
uh, because uh, in, it's generic in, this, in, in, in these regulated industries, what procedures to follow to fulfill the requirements. Second, uh, it gives uh, some room for your own requirements, if you like, as I showed you in the user requirement specifications, you can place plenty of, uh, of uh, new requirements, uh, what is special for your company. And then, of course, you can uh, test uh, the, whether those uh, requirements are satisfied or not. So you have uh, absolutely free in adding uh, new items within the temp frame of the template. So uh, we, we tried not to uh, force you to make several documents. Uh, once you have called Beamer here, you uh, might add your own uh, requirements and or uh, regulations to, to the template, and then you can print it out in one, in the same documents and uh, approve and sign the documents in one session. So, Kalman, there's actually another uh, question with regards to documents and signing them. A user is asking, can you electronically sign documents that are uploaded in the documents folder? Could be more externally created documents? Yes, of course, you can upload uh, new documents. It's absolutely free. Uh, if you want, to, I can show you. Uh, the document section can be extended with new folders. And also, your company documents can be sorry, uh, uploaded like this. Either you create a new uh, directory, and you add the files. And later on, those files can be, I'm sorry, uh, those files can be referenced in your, your code beamer section. So any file can be, uh, can be a drawing or an org chart or can be a PDF document or document, Excel document, anything. And that can be uploaded to the uh, system. And then uh, you will be able to use that as a reference. I just select uh, one, sorry. Mm. For instance, the presentation for what I, I can open and I can upload to the system. Press and upload. And you also, sorry, asking about e-signing these documents, uh, electronic signatures. But I'm sorry, I don't understand you. The user is also asking uh, whether it's possible to electronically sign the documents uh, uploaded. So the document that you just uploaded, mm -hmm. whether you can... Uh, uh, have an electronic signature to it. Okay, the document itself uh, cannot be uh, can be digitally signed, but it's not done within Code Beamer. Digitally signed that means the document itself will have a a, a signature. Uh, right now, here in Code Beamer, you cannot do that. But uh, if you include that document uh, in one of the requirements, then you will be able to use the. Uh, uh, standard features, uh, I probably show you. Here are the user requirement specifications. And once you include your own uh, document, just a second. Let's say the document I've uh, uploaded right now is uh, one of the base company documents you open any of the uh, user requirement specifications. And you can uh, connect here a document which is uploaded to the document section right away. This one was it. And then you have the ability now to, I'm sorry, put it into the middle of the line, sorry. And you save your work, and this uh, item can be signed, uh, and can it can go through the workflow and can be approved by multiple people. And this approval, make sure that uh, the the people who approved read this document and and agree with that. So this kind of workflow, like you can define now, and you can review it or you can send for approval. And this way, the item here becomes approved by either by multiple people. 
And also, let me just add that uh, e-signatures and approvals are getting an update in CodeBeamer's upcoming version, 9.3, uh, which is going to be released soon, so stay tuned for, for more information on that. And Common, there's one last question uh, that we have time for today. The user was asking how they could get access to this validation project template. Those documents. Uh, what do you mean, how big? No, how, how to get access to the template. So I can actually answer that. Oh, okay. uh, you can just simply contact Implant Software at either sales at implant.com or using uh, the contact form on our website. Uh, I think uh, you fill in the, the contact form on the uh, Implant website and you can receive the document from, contact, uh, from Implant Sales. So uh, I think the best uh, practice to contact Implant Sales about the conditions you can access the uh, template and then you right. can very quickly get use of it, yeah. Yes, and I think that con concludes our session for today. Uh, we're a little bit over time. If you do have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to Implant Software. And also, of course, if you're interested in template. And otherwise, we'd like to thank you for your time. Goodbye. <laughs>